Suella Braverman had a contempt for the principles of law that she displayed in office. Uh, I say this not likely at all. Um, the restrictions on the amount of money that she was paying to asylum seekers was challenged in the courts and the judge found Suella Bravman wanting. And uh, that was in July, I think, of this year. Uh, the judge felt that the long delays in processing requests for payments were as equally pernicious as the failure to provide those payments in the first place. So uh, the, 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 the fact that Suella Bravman went on and presided over two laws which will be judged in the future to be faulty, bad laws. Uh, I was going to say illegal, but of course the fact that they are laws means they're not illegal. But they, I, I think they will be in time overturned or repealed. That is the Nationality and Borders Act and the Illegal Migration Act. You can't define something into existence. This is one of the problems with one of the most beautiful pieces of philosophy, of medieval philosophy in the 11th century. Anselm tries to define the existence of God, tries to prove the existence of God by definition alone. So he says that God is that than which nothing greater can be considered. Id quo nihil maius cogitari potest. And so whatever you think of, God is greater than that. And so his, his, his great, his great um, statement is, even the atheist says there is no God. Well, the atheist is already using the language of divinity in order to define himself or herself. And therefore, uh, defying the very, the, 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 the very reality uh, that the atheist is trying to deny or affirming the very reality that the atheist is trying to deny. Uh, it, it, it's a wonderful game, but it is nevertheless a game. And it's been ridiculed by countless philosophers ever since. And I certainly think it is the most beautiful introduction that any, anybody can ever have to abstract thought. But at the same time, it fails. And it fails whether it's presented by Anselm or whether it's presented by Descartes. Um, or whether, it, whether indeed it's even presented in mathematical terms by someone like Gettier. It fails, it fails, it fails because you can't define something into existence. So simply saying, this cat is a dog, this colour is a different colour, and legislating using the whole panoply of parliamentary legislation to support your view is, is nonsensical because in the end, when it comes to court, the judges are going to say, well, this doesn't make any sense. This cat still barks. And, I, and you may call that red, but I still see it as blue. And Henry VIII had the same problems when he set himself up as head of the church. And it doesn't matter how many heads he cut off. By the time you get to the 19th century, people in the Anglican church were trying to recapture Catholicism in the Oxford movement and so on. And the natural result of that is John Henry Newman's return to Rome. But what he finds, of course, is a Roman Catholic Church which has advanced beyond the point of the, of the break with Anglicanism. And I'm afraid, I, I, I'm afraid we're heading in exactly the same direction with 
this law. The Conservative Party is the party of law and order. So to challenge the limits of the law, to test the limits of the law, is like a burglar having been caught red-handed, saying, well, I'm just testing the limits of the law. The burglar doesn't have the advantage of being able to define law. Suella Brabman does, but that is a, is a spurious advantage and, <laughs> and, and a fake advantage. And over time, it will be proven to be so. The 83-year-old disabled woman who was unable to access accommodation and support in July, the Home Office was ordered to pay her compensation because they had failed in their legal duty to provide that woman, asylum seeker or not, with accommodation and support. And um, the court found, uh, to, to quote John Crowley, the court found in no uncertain terms that the Home Office current system for supporting asylum seekers is unlawful. It is unacceptable um, that people had to go months and months without any form of support, forcing them into desperate and horrifying situations. It cannot be right that people legitimately seeking asylum are made to suffer such degrading treatment. And it comes down to that. You cannot degrade people in this way simply because they have presented themselves in this country seeking support. If we reject that support, if we reject their claim, then they become illegal migrants and they can be expelled from our country. But not to have processed their claim and to treat them with contempt, to put them in a barge, to put them uh, in, to, to cram them into hotels without proper support, to uh, rally the society of bigots against them. All of these things are unacceptable and there are legal precedents being set up that show that. And simply defying a, defining a law that says these people are illegal because of the mode of entry or these people should be sent off uh, and we should be um, processing, we, we, we should be delegating our responsibilities to another country, to Rwanda. All of this is playing with the law. And in the end, the case history will speak louder than Suella Bravman or whoever happens to be sitting in the throne of the Home Office at the present time. Jason Cleverly, Pretty Patel, Suella Bravman. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter if it's the Prime Minister himself. It's all going to be judged fallacious. It's all going to be judged wrong. And in the end, the party which claims to be for law and order is going to find itself with egg on its face.